This is Boxing Tickets NIA in association with SB Sports. We're here, the, the final press conference, although most people's headed away now, but delighted to be joined with, with probably the main man of Queensbury promotion, De- Dev Sayani. Um, we've had back and forth, obviously, I, I think I initially met you, obviously, um, Kakachi Bowen um, in Birmingham, what was it, 2019? Feels like a long, long ago now. It was a long, long time ago. I mean, yeah, definitely don't call me the main man at Queensbury. I, I will get a slap. But, um, yeah, I mean, Anthony Kukachi, well done to you, by the way. You are always, like, around him and, and good for, like, Northern Irish boxing. You're always getting about the gyms and making sure that these fighters are being heard, which doesn't always happen. So well done on that. Um, it's great to see Anthony Kukachi getting a homecoming, getting his first fight in Belfast in eight years. We just... Hopefully he comes through. We just need to get him the big fights now. He just needs to kick on. He's, he's, I think he's one of the most talented fighters from these and, and those shores. And um, he just hasn't had the run of luck yet. And maybe it's going to start now. Maybe, uh, maybe something will kick in here. When he sees the reception that he gets from the Belfast crowd, I think it could be the start of something. I don't think he actually appreciates probably how much of a reception he's going to get on Saturday night. As you'll know, obviously sometimes when people are so used to seeing someone on the TV, even though they know them, but they haven't got to see them fight. He's obviously young kids as well, haven't got to see him fight, fight in the flesh as well. I think when obviously he's making that ring walk obviously on, on Saturday night, I think it's probably going to give him that motivation sometimes, as you'll know, that he hasn't had, where he's like... I'll just go through the motions. I don't want to stop this guy. I don't want to put their health in problems. He's going to go out there looking for a stoppage on Saturday. I think he will be looking for that stoppage. I think it's it's different, obviously, fighting at home, fighting in Belfast with all the people that he knows, all the people that weren't able to make his fights in, like, Birmingham or, or wherever he's been fighting, or Manchester. I think it's going to give him a different feeling. Um, look, it might even come on top. It might even be too much for him. We, we've seen in, in recent weeks when someone has a big homecoming fight how maybe the crowd, maybe it just overtakes everything I'm talking of course about Katie Taylor maybe she lost herself a little bit in in the the epic ring walk and you know that that could happen here as well with Anto Kukachi I I think you're right I I think he is underestimating how much love he's going to get from the Belfast crowd and um, I think he'll he'll be able to channel it into a knockout the last time you were obviously here for a fight card obviously Frampton Jackson 2018 we were obviously speaking about it yesterday and you're thinking you're obviously saying Tyson Fury and I was saying the rain Everybody remembers Windsor Park. It's, it's been a long time sort of coming here. That was the last world title fight in Belfast, so it's nearly five years coming up. We, we've been starved of obviously world title boxing. Obviously the main event on Saturday night, you know, I'm not sure what your thoughts are on the main event or whether you can have an opinion, I guess, sometimes within it, but what a cracking fight. What a cracking fight. And this Lopez fella that I was saying earlier, the fact that he went to Leeds... Uh, very hostile. You don't want to be in Leeds as an away fighter. The fact that he went there, he had Josh Warrington coming towards him, boxing how Josh Warrington boxes, you know, he can be rough and ready in there. He went through all of that and was still able to come out of it as the away fighter with the world title. Says a lot about Luis Alberto Lopez and he was he was having a laugh at times in there. He complained a little bit here and there, but generally he kind of did what he wanted. Um, so I think he, he might be the f- best featherweight in the world right now. It's, it's sort of a toss-up between him and Lara. Um, but Mick Conlon, with this Belfast crowd, with being, as Adam Booth said, at the apex of his career, 31 years old, having learnt from a loss, not having the pressure of losing an O anymore, uh, I think mentally he's in a better place than he's ever been. He seems so cool up there. And it could well be his time. It could well be his time. Sometimes timing is everything and a bit of hometown advantage does help. But Mick's got his work cut out. Make no, no bones about it. Does it remind you a wee bit of Uzak? Obviously Uzak, went, a road man, sort of was going to everybody's territory and winning belts. Obviously look what he done. Obviously he dominated cruiserweights. He's obviously three belts and in the heavyweight division as well. I guess sometimes you don't have to be the home fighter. If you have the talent, you'll get there. Yeah, and, and sometimes you have no choice but to be the, the away fighter and go, go on the roads. I, I don't know how much um, appetite... You know, that it's only recently that big boxing has started going to Mexico again, right? Um, and Luis Alberto Lopez has made his whole career really away from that, and he, he's had to, really. But uh, similarly with Usyk, he's, he's been the road warrior as well. You get fighters like that that aren't phased by it, and they get used to it. But, uh, again, I don't think there's more of a hostile um, sort of audience 
arena to go into than Josh Warrington away. So he'd have ticked the big, big box there. Uh, will Belfast be more hostile? I I don't know. I don't think so, to be honest. I think they're, they're quite a knowledgeable, generally a very respectful crowd. So I don't think they're going to be uh, you know, chucking drinks at him or anything like that. I think they're going to be all right. So he is... He will be unfazed by uh, by being in Belfast, in, in my opinion. Obviously, another couple of Queensbury fighters on the card. Obviously, uh, Pierce O'Leary. Obviously, in, in my opinion, is probably one of the best, you know, prospects and and not even Irish boxing, UK boxing, probably maybe in world boxing. Is that obviously alter ego, the Clark Kent, you know, and, and obviously he's now the horse whisperer as well from your for obviously your interview as well. But you've obviously Pierce, you've Willow Hayden, I think you've Callum Thompson maybe on the card as well. Is it a good showcase for some some of the talent coming through Queensbury as well? Yeah, look, we've got some very good fighters. I think we've got five fighters on the show as well. As you said, Willow Hayden, Callum Thompson, Pierce, Big Bang, O'Leary, Nick Ball's on there as well. I've obviously forgotten one. Who have I who have I missed out? Ando. And of course, and we already spoke about him. I guess we sort of seeing about him as like a like a Belfast man. But yeah, there's 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 plenty of great talent on there. I think Nick Ball in particular will be looking to make a statement. He has wanted very much to be on this card. Um, there was a nice shot there of the belt being behind him, a world title belt being behind him. I think before long there'll be a world title belt in front of him at these press conferences as well. So he's got a chance to make a big statement and really light up the crowd here. Because the way he fights, you can't take your eyes off it. He is constantly springing up trying to take someone's head off. And Pierce O'Leary, as, as you said, all of these guys are hyping him up big time. They know what a talent he is. Jamie Conlon keeps talking about what a talent he is. Francis Warren has been talking about him for years and years and years as well. I mean, um, he's wanted to box on home soil. This isn't quite Dublin, it's Belfast, but he gets a chance to make a big bang. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. He's uh, Him and Nick Ball are quite similar. I've, I've seen them both recently at, at their gyms. They've both got that, you just sense the fighter in them, like no nonsense. Uh, and yeah, I think, I think Belfast will take to him. Do you think probably in some ways, obviously Nick Ball, you know, everybody, Irish fighters love, obviously people love and come and have a fight. In some ways it reminds me a bit of Frampton. Obviously, people are getting behind him. He knows that people are spending the harder money to come and watch him. You know, he's, he's obviously had a big rise, obviously, from the, the sort of pandemic. Obviously, I think he's four stoppages in a row. Everybody's bigger than him as well. So it's like, you know, and I think Lamati, I think, is about six inches tall on him. But but he doesn't care. You know, you don't even need to give him a step ladder. He'll be happy to jump and throw a punch. Yeah, look, he's, uh, he's been boxing bigger people his, his whole life. And uh, I'd imagine at school he'd have always been the smaller kid. I'd imagine he'd have got some stick and I'd imagine he'd have got in some scraps. It's been his life. He's, he's not, a, not a tall guy, but he is an absolute wrecking ball. And uh, there's something very, very entertaining about watching this, this guy that's like a mini Mike Tyson at featherweight just jumping up trying to take people's heads off. I think he's, he's used to fighting these taller opponents, as you said, six inches bigger. It just means, you know, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Nick Ball says that, you know, it'll be about one inch by the time I'm, I'm done with him, you know, laying down. Um, very exciting style. You, you can't watch a Nick Ball fight and sort of be bored. It's, it's just, I've called him Liverpool's answer to Javonta Davis. It's the same sort of thing. All of his opponents are bigger than him, and he gets them all out of it. And he jumps up, and it's so entertaining to watch. Who are you most looking forward to watching on Saturday night? Obviously, I guess there's maybe some of the Irish fighters, because you've you're, you're always are doing shows as well. Why I was saying you're the, the main man in Queensbury, you don't just do you know the, the top tables. You've always been doing the MC and... You're like a jack of sort of all trades. The only thing you, you probably haven't done is get in the ring and fight yet. <laughs> but not. but who are you looking forward to probably seeing the most on the card? Obviously, I know you're obviously going to be looking forward to seeing the Queensbury fighters, but is there any fight in particular, any person you're looking forward to watching? Look, I'm looking forward to all the Queensbury guys, of course. I'm looking forward to the whole show. Um, I'll tell you, I, I haven't yet seen Poddy fight. I'm intrigued. I, I'm not certainly not in person. I saw little clips of when he went over to beat Leon Bunn, and like he wasn't supposed to. So I, I'm intrigued. He's. I had a little chat with him yesterday. He's he took a bit of a break from boxing. He's come back to it. He's 29 when he turned pro as well. He hasn't. He hasn't got too much time. He's 34 years old now. So if he can make a statement. Hopefully he can get some big fights. I'm, I'm intrigued to see what, what he's like against this Diego Ramirez fella, who we know, you know, back down at welterweight, he knocked out Bradley Skeet, gave Nathan Heaney a good fight recently as well. So, yeah, I, I'm intrigued by him. But generally, you know, I want to see Nick Ball make a bit of a statement. I want, I want to see him knock this fella out, jump up to the top rope, and do the uh, that gesture 
around the waist. Remember when Errol Spence did that, mm. when he wasn't the champion? Oh, I can't remember who he had. It was, he had some fella in front of him, the Italian guy. He knocked him out, he jumped up to the top rope and he made, made the belt around the waist gesture to, as a message to the champions. I want to see that from Nick Ball. I was sort of saying to Jamie there as well, obviously he had antics in Germany when, when Potty obviously won the belt in the ring, jumping about, and I was saying on Saturday night when Mick becomes champion, is it T-shirts off? Will we, we do the Stone Cold Steve Austin, get a couple of beers and go on the top rope? But I guess the emotions in sort of boxing, you know, it's the same wee minutes sometimes we remember, you know, somebody's gracious in the fight, somebody stops someone and they don't start going mad and celebrating, but we're in for a special, special night. We are, and look, that's, a, that's an interesting point about the not over-celebrating when someone's down. I think it, it depends on the level of like injury and how, how bad it looks. Um, we've seen some good ones and some bad ones, but these, these are fighters. These aren't like you know, therapists who know all of the things that you should and shouldn't do and how someone's state of mind, etc. These are fighters. They've just won a fight. They've done what they said they were going to do, and they're going to act accordingly. It's up to the corners, really, to calm them down, but... Yeah, I, th- I think we'll see some good good knockouts on Saturday. Yes, not well, listen, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to obviously finally get you in camera. Obviously, I know I spoke to you a few times. We're the last here. That's the dedication. Me and you are the last ones here. Yeah. We'll probably be the last ones to leave the SSE on Saturday night as well. Um, but obviously, I hope you really enjoy. Obviously, Saturday night, hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes the way it should. I guess, finally, obviously, as you say, with three cards on in the one night, I sort of said to Jamie there as well, for anybody watching this that's not sure, probably I would say it's a toss between two. It's Wooden Lara and obviously Conan Lopez. Why should people be tuning in this on Saturday night? I think all three are excellent fights, by the way. They're all excellent fights. Um, what this fight has that the other ones don't is you've got uh, that moment when Mick Conlon's music hits and all the lights are out and everyone's got their, their phones out and Mick Conlon can realise a lifelong dream in front of his fans a boyhood dream to become world champion i think that's going to be an iconic iconic moment um and yeah billam smith's doing that in bournemouth as well but i'm not sure how well versed a bournemouth uh yeah, crowd are uh, as opposed to a belfast crowd this is a fighting city so many great shows so many great memories here and i think you can really see something some memories being made on saturday yeah, no, listen thanks very much for your time and enjoy the rest of your time in belfast no worries, no worries.